In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at the Cinedec project window. Cinedec recorders have an extremely flexible interface for setting your file structure, meaning the folders where you store your content and also the file names used for each clip. For this tutorial, we're looking at an RX3G. RX and MX have virtually identical settings as regards projects and file naming, with the big difference being that the RX is two channels and the MX has four channels. So let's go to Setup and Projects for the main project window. It should be noted that there are many settings stored within a project. The project window only deals with settings directly related to folder and file naming. To help illustrate this, let's take a quick look at how the machine is set up now so the differences will be more apparent as we go forward. If we look at the Channel 1 Overview page, we get a complete picture of the active settings and you can confirm which channel is being displayed at the top of the screen. Going down through the page, our project name is 1. 1 is the default starting project name on every Cinedec, so even if you make no changes, you have a project set for a recording session. There is a default tape or reel ID, which is commonly needed for Avid editing environments, which uses the project name and the encoder or channel name. The input for this channel is currently set to SDI NTSC, and so on. The encoder is set to make an MPEG IMX recording. The destination drive is currently set to a local attached USB drive, which I selected previously to help illustrate the drive destination flexibility. If we switch to the input page for channel 1, we see NTSC 5994 is indeed set for our source. The master codec page shows IMX as the codec with two channels of audio turned on. Looking at the right side of this page, you can see I have multiple drive choices available, including a network drive. One of Cinedec's unique features is the ability to record directly to network storage, simple shares from a NAS like I have here, or virtually any SAN system that has a Windows client available. RX has two removable drive sleds, each of which can hold two standard 2.5 inch drives. This system has three SSD drives installed, two in the left sled, one in the right, left one, right one, and left two. The icons clearly show which physical drive is being used and the position it has in the sleds. There are also two local attached drives available, an eSATA drive and the USB drive seen on the overview page. I will not be utilizing all of the drives. They are just connected to demonstrate the possibilities and to highlight that when you are setting up your session, you need to be mindful of the capabilities of the drive and how it is connected versus the needs of the codec and the number of streams you want to write to the drive. Let's switch back to the Projects window. Down the left side is the project name list, which currently only has the default number one project. Further down there are several buttons, including Global. Keeping in mind that these are multi-channel machines, Activating Global simply tells all of the channels to take the same selected project name. On the right are the data entry fields for the master path and file name, proxy path and file name, tape or real ID, and the scene, which is an optional field for holding additional data that might be required for your production. Below this, we have a listing of the wildcards or variables which are available to be used when setting the name conventions. Utilizing variables speeds system setup and helps eliminate errors as you only have to set or enter data once. That data is then reused where needed by inserting the relevant variable. For example, let's look at the master path. This is the folder structure that will be used for writing our master recordings. The variables %p and %e are used, and we see in the list %p means project name and %e is the encoder name. You see percent %s for scene, which is this field just above the list. Percent lowercase t represents an incrementing take number. Percent %x is the word proxy, and the list goes on to include date, time, and day of the week variables. There can also be six user-created variables, which might contain something like a program ID. We will look at these in more detail when I load a saved project. Click on Manage Projects, to delete the highlighted project, create a new project, and rename an existing project. If we click New, we can enter the name for our new project, which I will name NY for New York, and save it. 
Now you can select between the one and New York projects. If we select the New York project, we can use the same process to rename it LA for Los Angeles. With the same project selected, we can also choose to delete the project. I should note that if the Cinedec knows there is media on a connected drive, which is associated to a project, you cannot delete the project. Project setting gives you the ability to import and export projects. Export saves all of the active settings to a file for later recall, and import brings saved settings back to an active state. I will select import to load a saved project. Normally the projects are saved in the projects folder in the main Cinedec folder on the C system drive, but you can actually store them anywhere. Let's select the BBC Ships project and click load. Loading a project changes an array of settings, and the overview page shows that things have changed significantly. The project is BBC. The tape or reel ID reflects data stored in the selected variables. Note the C1, my short version for camera 1. I renamed the encoders or channels as C1 and C2 for cameras 1 and 2. The master codec is now set to ProRes, while the proxy is set to H.264. You may recall that earlier, the proxy encode was not turned on at all. Switching to input, we see the settings have changed from NTSC to 1080i. On the master encode page, we see ProRes selected with two channels of audio instead of IMX. And note the drive destination is now left one in place of the previously selected USB drive. So you can see, loading project settings really does change the whole setup. Project Path Override provides an additional layer of file destination control. Project settings, combined with drive selection, provide a very useful structure for your files, but some productions may require even more flexibility. So Project Path Override allows the selection of specific drive and folder destinations for each file created. Here, if we click Save, we would be selecting the specific wall folder on the L2 SSD as the destination for the primary master clip, but we're not going to do that. Back on the master codec page, we could also select a different project path override for the secondary or redundant master clip. And of course, from the proxy codec page, we could make the same kinds of selections for the primary and secondary proxy files. At the bottom left of the master codec page is where we find the encoder name, which was set to C1 when I loaded my project. Clicking here would allow changing the encoder name to something else, but we'll stay with C1. Back on the project page, we can see the folder path and file name setup is quite different as well. The master folder path, as before, is percent %p for the project name, but it is followed by percent %1 and percent %2, which are two of my user-created variables. Looking more closely, the template shows the percent %p percent %1 and percent %2 variables expand to BBC for the project, followed by a PID, or project ID, and a program name, SHIPS. Both of these get pulled from my user variables. Of course, you are not limited to just using variables. Text can be typed directly into the template field, and the results are immediately visible in the expansion display. To add variables, for example the six-digit time of day, you select them from the on-screen keyboard, and you remove variables by deleting them. The master file name has also changed significantly, showing the BBC project name and the percent %2 variable for the ship's program name. You might imagine this is an interview, so I have used the scene variable to include the name J. Davis. That is followed by the encoder, which is named for camera 1, and the incrementing take number completes the file name. I also set up the proxy differently. The proxy path uses the same information as the master path. However, after the project, project ID and program name, I have a subfolder named P. For this production, the proxy files will be written to the P subfolder of the master clips folder. The proxy file name has been changed in a similar way. It takes all the same name elements as the master, but at the end of the name, after the take number, is a dash P to indicate that the file is a proxy. Back near the bottom of the main project window, 
you can see J. Davis entered in the scene field, and just above is the tape or reel ID, again with the percent %p project variable, the user created percent %2 program name, which will be ships, and percent %e for the encoder name. Directly related, as a subset of project settings, are channel settings. Channel settings files contain input, encoder, project, and timecode settings which are channel specific. So you might say that a project file contains channel settings for all channels plus global settings such as project and encoder names. Now that our project settings are active, we can record some content and look at the result. Gang mode locks channels together so a single click can start the recording across multiple channels. Again, this is a two-channel RX, but this all works the same on a four-channel MX. So our BBC Ships project is recording with the specified file naming including J. Davis and the encoder or camera designation. This being the first clip, the take is 001. The proxy name below shows the same information with the P appended to indicate the proxy resolution of this file. On the next channel, the same information is being used, but here, C2 for camera 2 is inserted. Remember, stopping a recording requires a long press, which helps prevent accidents. Clicking play loads the most recent recording. Note the drive, folder, and file information at the top. In this window, you can play and scrub through the clip, etc. But we are interested in the file naming and folder structure, so let's exit out to the Windows environment. Back on the main screen, click Setup, and on the Prefs page, click Exit App. Cinedex all have touchscreens, and there is an on-screen keyboard available from the desktop, but a USB keyboard and mouse make working in Windows much easier. In Windows Explorer, you can see and manage files on all of the available drives. The clip we were playing is on the G drive, where we see the BBC project name. The folder window lets us see the subfolders logically laid out. Here is the project ID and project name, ships. On the right, we see the contents of the selected project subfolder, which contains the proxy subfolder and the channel 1 and channel 2 master clips. Go into the proxy folder and we see the channel 1 and channel 2 proxy clips. In this case, because we used an MP4 wrapper, there are also XML files for each proxy clip. The folder window provides the best view of the folder structure with the drive, the BBC project folder, the program ID master clip subfolder, and the subsequent proxy clip subfolder. Now let's look at the same folders and files from within the Cinedec Clip Manager. On the left is the disk selector. Note the icon that indicates that our G drive is L1, which is the top drive which is installed in the left drive sled. The arrow below the disk column allows navigation through the list of available drives. Click a drive to select it. On the G drive is the BBC project folder which contains the program ID folder, which in turn contains the proxy folder and the two master clips. Clicking the arrow below the folder column moves back up through the folder structure, and if we had multiple subfolders, these arrows would allow navigation through the folder lists. The clip display also has a list view for displaying more clip detail. Time and codec specifics, start time, duration, codec, and wrapper. At the top right is a column scroll control, which can be used to bring more detail into view. If we dig down into the proxy folder, the same details are available, and each proxy file has the specified P appended to the name. So that is it for the project window. I hope this tutorial was helpful and that you will watch out for more of these mini-tutorial sessions. CineDeck. Your workflow. Your way.